Hi. Hi, okay, thanks. Thank you very much, and thanks for staying on just before our drinks. I won't be too long, the hardy few. So I'm going to be really rapid and fast with this presentation. So GeoDirectory, just to give you a quick overview, very quick overview, we supply a database of all the buildings in the country were owned by Unpost and Ordnance Survey, and we've been going for a number of years now. It's quite a, in Irish terms, it's a big database, 2.2 million addresses, 600,000 changes per annum. So you can see it moves quick. We're in the middle of many different industries. We serve right across the board, from big to small, global, multinational, to your mom and papa store or local places, okay? So we've quite a, we've sit in the middle of a lot of projects, and we decided to build our own blockchain uh, because we thought it would be a really good thing to do. And I'm really not gonna talk about what we've done, about technology. This is more a talk about how things have developed with blockchain across different markets with a focus on the public sector in, in mainland Europe, okay? So a bit of a different talk. We're not talking about GeoDirectory at all. We didn't build anything here. We're not trying to sell anything. We're just trying to give share with everybody here uh, the knowledge that we've gathered and the experiences that we're looking at that affect how this technology is, its rollout has been, has been challenged, okay? So these are the type of things that are the acknowledged benefits of blockchain. I'm not gonna read through all of them. They're there for you to see. They're well, well rehearsed. Um, for the case studies that we looked at, the benefits from a governmental stroke local authority sort of in, in, in academic institution was the idea of reducing costs, um, you know, reduced data exchanges, bureaucracy, corruption, corruption being a big thing because corruption equals trust or lack of trust, and, um, you know, automation, automation, transparency, accountability. Okay, so again, well, well, well rehearsed for um, blockchain. In the context, everything happens in some sort of context, and these are the four key pillars that the European countries we're going to look at now in a second were building their blockchains within. Their concerns were about citizen ID management, um, taxation, every government worries about tax, or two things are, only two things are certain in life, death and taxes. Uh, department, uh, development of aid management services, so helping and to redistribute income to less advantaged people, and uh, regulatory compliance, regulations, all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna look at Georgia, Malta, and the Netherlands, okay? Um, and these comes from a European study. So the first one is Georgia, where they're looking at basically the equivalent of the land reg here in Ireland, and how land title is managed and held and transferred, okay? Uh, they're trying to make it a lot more efficient, a lot more transparent. So uh, they're using Exxon, blockchain with a Bitcoin blockchain. Exxon is a private version, which is then fed out onto the Bitcoin, okay? So that's the, I haven't got a, there's no laser pointer here. So that's the scheme of how it actually works. So the, the citizen sends it in to the notary who puts it in their blockchain, the Exxon blockchain, and then it's shared back through the NPR, uh, or NPR uh, who manage the whole uh, citizen relationship and the documentation, and then you and I can hop on to the Bitcoin blockchain and see who owns what property, etc. cetera, right? Um, so it's a fairly simple idea. It did reduce the time it takes to do this process from three days to a few minutes, which is a big time saving. It increased transparency, security, all those good things. Um, and, uh, you know, an operational saving of 90%. Most organizations and most people who develop products would love to be able to say that. And no additional infrastructural costs. So looks like a big win. There was problems though. There are problems in maintenance, transactional operation, and the implementation of the Exxon blockchain was difficult. And using, they have to use a, well, they wanted to make sure when they did this project that they wouldn't be locked into Bitcoin. And so they used a, uh, you know, an open system. So next one. I'll fly through this, is great. Next one is Malta, and they were looking, basically a university-based system, which we're looking at making it easy for students to share their certificates uh, with future employees and make it easier for future employees to verify that the students were the owners of the certificates that they were producing in interviews, okay? And they produced this thing called block certs. So, jumping real quick, this is it here. So it comes on the left-hand side, it comes from the institution out to the citizen, and it's an app. The, the pupil is called a citizen, but really it's an ex-pupil. You then use your phone, log on to the app, exchange some details, which passes a public key back to the institution. 
which then they can share through what they're calling their, um, I forgot what they call it actually here, can't see it up there. Anyway, whatever they, they call the blockchain, is to have a particular name on it, or oh, block certs is what they're calling it. They share it back out through Bitcoin so third parties can go have a look. So you go to an interview, you share, essentially you give them a URL, that's what it actually looks like. They click on the URL, they can, can see that you are, who you, well, the URL you share is you and all, of, all your certificates, all your certs are correct, okay? So that's using blockchain to simplify a process. Now, um, it, it was found to help with identif identification and privacy protection, which is very good. Um, it was easy to access and use and was very friendly. Uh, there was time savings with it. It's self-administered, so the, there's time saving and cost saving there that I have to make sure that I have the right certificates against my name and I'm making sure that happens and they say the right things and they're from the right institutions. And uh, they used open standards so other countries could build on it. Uh, problems though, again, high costs. Okay, it's high cost of implementation. And then another problem was that it only really works in Malta, not outside of Malta yet, because they've closed it a little bit. So it's, it's proven a concept rather than proven to be very su successful blockchain, to be honest. The next one is in the Netherlands. I'm not going to try pronounce all of those names, cities, because I'm not going to get it right. But basically, the idea here is to um, supplement family income so that people on low incomes can have an extra bit of money to spend, essentially, okay? Uh, this was a paper-based system where they were given vouchers to go and spend in various outlets. And uh, so the idea was to make it much easier to transact and also to uh, save money, if you like, and much more efficient. So they developed this idea of a uh, smart voucher or a, smart, a voucher on a blockchain. And you and I apply for it to our local authority, essentially. They confirm we're eligible. They put it in what they call their um, blockchain here, what's it called? Smart blockchain, Zcash blockchain. Uh, all, of our, I, I, our, all of our details are in there. You then go into businesses that are participating in the scheme. They have a QR code, you read your phone, you automatically get your discount. It goes onto the chain, back into the blockchain, and the company is paid overnight. So instead of paying 100 euros for the product, you might only pay 50 or 80 or whatever the discount happens to be, and the companies don't have to worry about the paperwork, it's all done for them. So it's much more likely the companies will participate in the scheme, and it's broadened what they can do considerably, so from cinema tickets to solar panels, and anywhere in between. Um, okay, so it improved the uh, efficiency and record keeping. Uh, easy to use and increased public accountability and audibility. Um, you know, it's, it's much better than the voucher system. It's digital rather than paper-based, which is a big improvement, but the high valid validation costs. So it's not perfect. Uh, so there were some, all of these scalability, stability, governance, flexibility, trust, implementation styles, all, all of these things come down to essentially cultural issues that hit, hit people issues as much as anything, right? And all of them took away from the benefits of blockchain. Now, this could be said for any, uh, any system, any new system going in. Um, so what was seen is really the benefits across the three I've shown you today was uh, security, integrity, reliability, reduced processing time, and lower costs, all very good. Um, new generation of services were starting to emerge that could be invented. Uh, and uh, once only principle and stopping the IT silos that everybody talks about, making it more integratable and everybody able to get access. However, it was neither transformative or disruptive. So the benefits are back end rather than front end, and people don't really see the huge benefits in it. It's a slow burner rather than a rapid fire, as the way I describe it. Um, there was problems with integrating legacy databases, issues with um, stakeholders and business and other businesses having different objectives. Um, you know, the private data was stored off chain, that caused bandwidth restrictions, there was throughput issues, and a couple of I'm conscious of time here, a couple of other issues there as well. So as I said, it slow burn rather than light the fire under people to move, really, to be honest. Now, 
we decided to do a blockchain in spite of all of that, I suppose, or with all of that in mind. And I'm going to flick through these very quickly. So we took the approach of going industry level first. Okay, so we approach, because of our position in, in the market, we deal across all industries. So we approach, you know, insurance, banking, utility, telco. Uh, that's, about, that's their first four we've gone to. And we had a series of meetings with them, uh, and both individual and group based. Um, and these are the reasons that they're saying blockchain doesn't really yet fit with what they want to do. So it's uh, the concern about legal and regulatory. There's a fear of new IT infrastructures, how will it impact other things. Uh, other solutions are better than blockchain APIs, shared databases and things like that. And reluctance also to have information shared was actually a, a, another issue. But the real reasons we saw for the non-adoption, the slow take-up, if you like, of blockchain, is really a concern about losing competitive advantage. Now, this, I'm talking about private industry here. The first part of the talk was on the public sector. These are all private industry companies, so I'm giving you two different perspectives here. Uh, and many don't want to be forced. Even though blockchain is around maybe 10, 12 years, there is a fear about being forced and a lack of understanding of its potential imp implications on their business, their industry, and how you and I will may maybe react to that. Um, and so that is me finished. That's it, done, within time, great. Well Thank done, Dara. <laughs> Super, and uh, that's really fascinating because I think we spoke about this before and you were telling me that blockchain is a technology easy to implement, you have it done, you yeah. have it solved technically, but the market's not ready. So what do you think will take to get <coughs> these companies to really see and adopt this and move forward? Well, I, I, it's essentially, it's persistence. Mm -hmm. I mean, the back, if you can see 90% saving in customer, or sorry, customer force, if you yeah. can see 90% saving in operational costs, yeah. moving them from a three-day time scale to a 10-minute time scale, yeah. they're huge savings, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you put that in the private sector market, yeah. it's, it's also, that, you know, that can be replicated. Yeah. You don't have ma very, you know, major social network companies talking about investing a billion mm. in blockchain because it's bad. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So there are major advantages to blockchain, just the market hasn't seen it yet or isn't ready for it yet, or a bit of both. So you're, you're, we yeah. haven't reached the tipping point of it. Now, maybe we never will, we don't know. Right. But um, yeah. as our approach is very different, we approach yeah. it at an industry level rather than at a single in, in company level. So very it's good. interesting to see what happens. Yeah, we'll, see, uh, we'll watch this space. Exactly. Thanks, okay, Thanks very much. Thank Excellent. you. Cheers. Bye-bye.